it's all to race for. Come in the turn four. Oh, he's hit him. He's done it. What oh, he's done it too. Hello and welcome to the G-Affinity Arena for our last, I'm sad to say it, our last pro exhibition race. Uh, we have been treated throughout the series and tonight we have 20 more drivers taking to the circuit. Gilles Villeneuve in Canada. This is the best of the best going at it, will to will. And joining me on the desk for the last time, I, you have to hold it together, Natty, because if you don't, I won't, I'll start crying. Uh, of course, Sky F1 presenter, Natalie Pinkham. Natty, uh, it's been a fantastic series. I I can't believe it's the last but yes I've been with you for seven of the eight I've absolutely loved it um, as with many people from Formula One I've had a newfound respect for the esports drivers the skill level has been off the charts and I'm just excited to be here tonight and you know maybe come back again I don't want another coronavirus, but no, maybe no, no, I could but come back for the actual eSports series later in the year. Which, which we're very much looking forward to. And there's been a lot of chopping and changing, debuts for drivers. They've, they've had to go out there and prove themselves. We saw that last week. We'll talk about Jano Otmir. But before we get to that, uh, last week we really were treated to a fantastic race in Baku. Here's some of the best moments. red lights around the streets of Baku and David Tanitza will lead them away from pole. Good start for Lucas Blakely but no momentum. He's made contact with the Red Bull. Nearly a spin there for Marcel Kiefer. Tanitza coming to the pit. So he knew he was going to get past there so he's gone for the strategy. So Jarno oh, Otmir. he's been held slightly in the pits. That could be crucial. Jarno Otmir up to P1. Lucas Blakely in second position. And this time, Lucas Blakely, after fighting for a couple of laps, has found a way to retake the lead. The top three absolutely together. Blakely defending well. There's another tap. Just a reminder that he's there. Blakely slightly wide. And this time, he returns to Fable. Will that give momentum to the Ferrari in P3? Yes, it will indeed. We're about to go three wide for the battle for the lead. Otmir up into the lead. Is he going to bring Tanitza with him? Yes, he is. I think that's going to be the inside line. And Blakely, after leading, might well be about to head down. Has that given an opportunity with Blakely and Tanitza getting into each other? Have they just handed victory to Jano Otmir? on board with the Alfa Romeo driver who wins on his debut for the team and Blakely's closing in, closing in, closing in, closing in, wait for it, he's ahead and it's P2 for Lucas Blakely who takes it on the line. Jano Otmir beats Lucas Blakely who snatches second place from David Tanitza. So there you go, what a great three-way battle that was. And the man who made his debut, it seems, sounds a bit misleading as if he's never raced before, former Renault uh, eSports driver Jano Watmir is there back again for the Alfa Romeo. And, and it was a great debut for him to win the race. It really was, what a transition. And under a lot of pressure because everybody in the racing world is watching and beyond. And he did so seamlessly. And as you say, that three-way battle at the end just kept us all right on the very edge of our seats. It was brilliant. And the Alfa Tori, uh, Manuel, well, Bianco Lila steps in for Yoni Tormula, who, who has, it has to be fair to say, has struggled in the races outside of P5. Uh, the last one he had a good uh, showing in the Dutch uh, Pro Exhibition. But again, uh, someone in the top corner there, Nathan Moore for McLaren, getting a chance to show what he's made of. This is just part one of the lineup. Moving on to part two, uh, a few standout names there. We know Brendan Lee, a two time uh, champion. But uh, what I'm excited about uh, is that guy, Freddie Rasmussen, unfortunately, um, unable to finish the last couple of races but we know what he is capable of winning in previous races. Absolutely and all of them have got this last chance to really prove themselves whilst everyone is watching. It's been interesting to see how they've been much more integrated into the teams uh, given the, the strange circumstances we find them in. That's been one benefit for the esports drivers as they've been absolutely immersed with their teams and uh, you know it's, it's a great platform for them so that I'm sure they'll go all out tonight to really prove a point. And the 2018 first pick in the F1 an eSports Pro Series draft comes back. Good old Tino, now cut in and I'm sure he'll go straight online to tell me I've pronounced it wrong. But Tino is back. Great to see because uh, he's got such good talent. But it just goes to show that the, the rosters, they're, they're stacks now. Having done military service, right? Yeah, in Finland. So now he's able to get back and start enjoying it. And Chinaka Clay, uh, great showing from him. Uh, he retains his seat after getting a P8 finish in Baku. Uh, we've already given the drama away for what's going to happen.
to happen. Up in the commentary, as always, they're ready uh, to talk about the thrills and the spills. It's, of course, Alex Jakes and Matt Gallagher. Gentlemen, uh, looking absolutely dapper tonight. Oh. It's the last one. Are you a little bit emotional? Are you holding back the tears? Oh, yeah, hugely, hugely. I mean, we've got, we've got work to do. We've still got work to do, but the tears, the tears will come later. OK, fair enough. And, Matt, um, I tell you what, didn't we do well to get on uh, the F1 Nation podcast with Alex, eh? Uh, that was all you. I didn't do anything, and I just somehow managed to sneak on. But, uh, yeah, very emotional times. The last one, uh, it's obviously going to be amazing to see real-life racing come back, but I think this has done a pretty good job in, in entertaining some people uh, for the last few months. Yeah, indeed. And, obviously, with those drivers coming in, uh, we see Shanaka Clay, which is great to see, a talented driver getting his opportunity. We know the F1 Esports Pro Series draft is going to happen uh, later on in the, the year, so it's a good opportunity to show what ability you have. But good to see Tino back, Matt, uh, apart from a very different difficult surname to pronounce. Absolutely. I think you definitely got it wrong, Tom. Uh, so you will be getting a message <laughs> later. But uh, yeah, it's their last opportunity, really, to show the teams what they're capable of. Canada, it's a pretty exciting track. Definitely some uh, overtaking moves possible. So let's see what, the, what can happen. I just want to pick up on a point that Matt made there. This really has proved so popular. Um, talking to some of the F1 drivers, they really have discovered esports in a whole new way. Not only has it helped them hone their own skills and stay on top of it and stay en entertained and engaged, but they've got this newfound respect for all the drivers that they've seen uh, really showing their talents for the last what, however many weeks, what, 10 yeah. weeks? It's been incredible. Yeah. Uh, what surprised you most, Alex? Did it surprise you last week when you had the commentators curse for Thibaut Courtois uh, <laughs> later on? Is that something that's uh, you're, you're, it's playing on your mind? No, uh, that, is, that, that, that is given to you on your first day as a commentator. <laughs> that you're going to ruin an unlimited number of people's days. It was usually me, wasn't it? But yeah, well, it's been, it's you, been uh, passed over now. <laughs> it wasn't bothering him until you said it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, that's, I like a little uh, jibe in there, a little bit of banter. Uh, listen, Matt, uh, Alex, the return of Freddie Rasmussen obviously did not finish in the last two races. Uh, we know how good he is and talented. Does it matter if, if he doesn't get a, a finish today going into that F1 Esports Pro Series later in the year? Well, he's quite lucky that he's had some amazing performances over the last few years that's kind of consolidated his position uh, in Red Bull. But if he continues this way and then the Pro Series comes back at the end of the year and he's still not on his A game, especially with Red Bull, we've seen it in real life, they can uh, start making some driver changes pretty quickly. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Freddie Rasmussen, as soon as, maybe even today, we'll see a, a glimmer of hope and some, uh, some serious raw speed that we're so used to seeing. And Matt, in terms of what they do after this, uh, it's potentially, well, minimal three months until they're racing again in, in the eSports series. What will they do in that time? Uh it depends, really. It depends if uh, they have the versatility to be able to go onto other platforms, other racing games, and get themselves involved in other esports tournaments as well. But uh, they'll be training, they'll be preparing. They, they are with the Formula One team, so they're not just going to shove them to one side and say, see you in three months. So I'm sure there'll be a training program to try and get them to the very top uh, before the season comes back. Yeah. Now, Alex, I've got to mention, before we get to qualify, that's what we're waiting on at the moment, uh, it came down to the last lap, lap 13, uh, the three-way race between uh, David Tanitza Lucas Blakely, Yane Otmir. What a great debut for Yane. But what did you make of that coming to the last lap? It, it was so exciting. Well, it was a phenomenal battle. Uh, I think if I'd been Lucas Blakely, I'd have been slightly irritated that I'd been, uh, been given the shove from behind before they went onto that back straight. But apparently he was fine. He was totally cool with it. Uh, Jano Opmir just on the right side of the rules, and he did what he needed to to get the victory. And, and David Tanitza tactically was in the wrong place in that drag race to the line uh, when he was beaten to P2. But a phenomenal battle. To have three cars battling until the very end, it was excellent. But, uh, yeah, Opmir using all of his experience to get that win. He uh, did take it incredibly well, which surprises yeah. me and actually made me wonder, what is the camaraderie like amongst the drivers? Because they haven't been able to see each other at all lately, but, but is there that, that kind of connection that that network that you might see in Formula One? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they've been involved in league races for years, a lot of them. They've known each other for many, many years. Some of my best friends have come from league racing, so I'm sure that the camaraderie there is very much there, apart from maybe when money's on the line and someone gets a love tap from behind, then maybe <laughs> slightly uh, a few arguments might might kick off. But yeah, the, the camaraderie is there, and they, they pretty much share the track hours upon hours every day, so they have to be friends, really. Otherwise, I don't think it'd be that enjoyable. Mm. Uh, obviously, last uh, seven days ago, we, we had the race in 
Baku. And, and Natalie and I here at the desk, we talked about this is a great opportunity for some of those drivers who, who we haven't seen before, uh, cementing a place, the likes of Nathan Moore in the McLaren. Interesting enough, an, an old driver, that sounds ridiculous to say, but back in 2017 when we were in Abu Dhabi, Matt, with Fabrizio Donoso, uh, the new driver for Renault. We know how good Nicolas Longuie has been throughout the season, great finishes uh, in some of the pro exhibition races. But what do you make of that, a driver that's got that potential but hasn't delivered in terms of results? Well, you, you mentioned Donoso. Yeah, that's an interesting one. And I think it just shows how the, the whole series has progressed from 2017, where it was very much, you know, kind of, OK, fastest laps. And then we go to, you know, amazing trip to Abu Dhabi. And we had that that finishing uh, where, where it was pretty much like on the podium. Donoso, great. But oh, there's some uh, players on our screen right now. But it just shows, as I say, within the last sort of three, four years, how far these drivers have come in, in terms of mental preparation and being able to be on it lap after lap apart from they're all on their phones right now. So really not... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> backing up my point at the moment. Very cool uh, to see the FDA uh, Hublot guys as well um, in, the, in the Ferrari Museum. Ah, oh, what, what, what a venue to be performing. But as you can see, uh, six of the drivers that we've highlighted tonight to, to be able to keep an eye on there. Uh, interesting enough, due to a qualification uh, situation, it's just going to be a one-shot qualification as we head mm. to the Pro Exhibition race uh, in Canada. So what, in terms of tactics, what, what's that going to mean? A one-shot qualification, Matt? Excitement. It's going to be it mean a lot of excitement, a few errors, hopefully, because then it will just shake up the grid a little bit more. It's pretty much like if you see a wet qualifying in, in real life Formula One. So one shot, that's all you've got. One lap. The tactics is don't put it in the wall. Don't put it in the ball of champions. And uh, well, it's, it's not the hardest track to nail. So let's see. Uh, let's see what qualifying brings us. Oh, perfect. Well, listen, uh, what well, great. Not yeah. the hardest track. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, from myself uh, and Nati, pass it over to you. Alex Chase, Matt Gallagher with the commentary. Yeah, I made it sound very uh, easy, didn't I? Apart from when I'm in the sim, uh, then it's not so easy. But uh, let's get to qualifying. Let's see how difficult it really is. <laughs> let's find out with one-shot qualifying. So it's hard enough around this circuit where the walls are tight. It's got that street circuit feel. It's going to be difficult uh, with just the one chance to qualify here. Uh, and that is different to the format that drivers have been used to. So it's who adapts best. And, and there's a bit of a balance to be struck, isn't there, between... Usually they like a banker lap, then some drivers just go back to the pits, they, they reflect on what they've learned, and then they go again. That all goes out the window now. It's all about straight out of the box, plug and play, who's fastest. Yeah, absolutely. It's very much as you say, that, that there are qualifiers out there that take a long time to bed into a session, you know, to have that bank collapse and feel comfortable to then go for that one shot. But uh, that's not that was not the case for me. I was one of the worst qualifiers, honestly. Uh, I won a league championship without ever getting pole position. There you go. <laughs> Boom. But uh, yeah, it's, it's possible around Canada to, uh, to overtake. So fortunately, as we see now, the one shot qualifying underway it is possible to overtake so even if you're in the top sort of six or seven don't be too disheartened and as you can see on the left this is the real-time qualification <laughs> so right now two-time champion brendan lee is right at the forefront doing what you could never do and sitting on pole position as it stands. Right now. <laughs> and there you go enzo Benito. so uh, the grid changing on the left hand side but that is real information uh, a live look as we go through the lap so brendan lee looking good at the moment then shanaka clay uh, dueling with lucas blakely another change to the grid on board with the finish driver coming down to the hairpin so the real time looking good and shanaka clay one of the drivers that we've highlighted, you can see it's so the driver's going to make a difference at every single corner, but there's only one chicane left at this point. So who's going to be brave? Who's going to launch it into this final chicane? Your exit from the hairpin is so important. The momentum that you take in one of the DRS zones, how brave are they going to be? Close to the wall of champions, just brushing on the way past, over the line, and it's Shanaka Clay who delivers. Nicholas Longe has been disqualified, Enzo Benito has been disqualified, but Shanaka Clay with that one lap qualifying, bit of an upset there, and a Williams, well, we've seen them doing very well indeed during the eSports uh, across all disciplines, and we'll have another one starting from pole, Clay ahead of Kiefer. Wow, I didn't expect that. But again, that's one shot qualifying for you. Shanaka Clay had a great result in Baku, uh, kind of putting himself in the in the sort of vision of the Formula One teams. He's very much now at the forefront uh, for this race. So very interested indeed to see the likes of Tanitza right down at the bottom. A few people being disqualified. So that would have been where they've corner cut, essentially, and then their laps invalidated. So there you go. There is qualifying. And, well, it's actually exactly the same time for Clay and Kiefer. Look at that. But Clay somehow 
got over half a millisecond quicker. <laughs> well, normally it would be uh, set to the, the person who yeah. said it first, but it was all at the same time. <laughs> so Clay getting the getting the nod there. Then Kiefer and Blakely once again. Blakely really taking a big step forward. Idowu as well. Yeah, great qualifying P4. And, and that's the mix that we've got. Drivers trying to put themselves in the shop window ahead of the return uh, of the draft. Uh, we think sometime in the autumn. And then Brendan Lee, we've already mentioned his two championships before. But that is exactly what we expected from one lap qualifying. We've got a bit of a mixed up grid. I'm looking forward to it. I very much am. Uh, Freddie Rasmussen, I think, was down in P9 or so. I didn't quite catch it, but uh, not particularly a great qualifying for him. Uh, well, it's not too bad. It's, it's somewhere in the mix of being able to get stuck in. And I've just heard in my ear yeah. there's been a rain in the race. Just chuck it in there as well. One lap qualifying. The theme today is how you adapt. We're like, this is the last one. Let's just stick every little thing to just change it. One shot qualifying, a little bit of rain, have everything. It's going to be exciting. Obviously, no DRS with that rain, but... I I think that that just allows more mistakes to, to happen from these pro drivers. They are aliens. They are known as very much near perfect. But wet weather conditions is something that I don't think they would have trained for as much. Well, this is high pressured stuff at the start. We see quite a lot of the time uh, really hairy first laps in Montreal. So as they go on to the formation lap, uh, they're going to have to keep that in mind. Are you going to take a big risk at the start? Are you going to launch one to the inside? Are you going to play the, the long game if you know you've had pace all the way through uh, this pro exhibition mm. season, but maybe you're slightly out of position, I would argue, like a David Tanitza? Yeah, I was just looking over, trying to, obviously you can see us, but also I was trying to work out if they're on wet weather tyres, and they are. So it is proper heavy rain conditions yeah. for this, which is very exciting. Obviously, with the dynamic weather, it means that the weather can change at any point. It can get drier, it can get wetter, although I don't think it can get much wetter. <laughs> and uh, I feel like it's kind of referring back to the amazing Canadian Grand Prix that Formula One showed oh. only yesterday. Uh, there's no Jensen Button in this race, but uh, I think it's going to be a very exciting race, especially with Shanaka Clay. He's never been in this position. Mm. He is is very much stuck himself on pole, probably looked at the time and gone, oh, I'm first, I'm not ready for this. But will he be ready? He's got the likes of Marcel Kiefer, who has already won uh, around Brazil. In these conditions as well. Exactly, and he was very quick off the line. So uh, I'd imagine Shanaka Clay is maybe a little bit nervous going into the start of this race. And Blakely as well, another recent race winner. So we've got uh, a few of the very quick guys at the front. Ado, as I say, very impressive indeed. Then Brendan Lee, nice little P5 for him. But if we look further down the field for FDA Hublot, Tanitza and Benito right at the back of the field. Where can they end up by the end of this race? Yeah, interesting to see whether we'll see the likes of uh, Freddie Rasmussen come through the field. Uh, Berezne as well, a very highly rated driver indeed, wins to his name in the eSports seasons that we've run previously. And then at the back, our reigning champion, David Tanitza, who does not have a win to his name in this run of races this year, last year's champion, he will be desperately trying to... Well, he's got nothing to lose, so we're going to see him on maximum attack. Yeah, he can't lose many positions from there, <laughs> and it's a wet race, which I think he'll probably be happy with, but then at the same time, you don't have DRS, so it's, it's a difficult one. But then you don't have a DRS train. Let's see what happens. So Shanaka Clay takes his position in the Williams on the right-hand side. Marcel Kiefer, a race winner this year already on the left. Are they going to attack at the start? You can see the Ferrari slotting into position. They are racing in the Ferrari Museum today. David Tanitza and Enzo Benito. And we're ready now for the lights. Three, four, five red lights in Canada. The lights go out and we will be underway for the final exhibition race this year. Good getaway for Shanaka Clay with Kiefer trying to pressure. Now, can Kiefer go all the way around the outside? No, goes wide. So he's going to be trying to defend from Blakely, who is momentarily up. I think they're all going to make it through. Turn number one, Clay with a dream getaway. That has gone perfectly for him. Brendan Lee has gained a position, getting past the McLaren up to P4, and they're all taking it nice and easy at this point, knowing that they've got 18 laps around this circuit, and they're all behaving at the start. Oh, but that was very, very close from Danny Perezne to losing the Alpha, gathered it all together. But it's Shanaka Clay from Kiefer, from, Bra from Blakely, the top three on lap number one.
I prefer Brakeley. What a name that would be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, as you say, Kiefer was trying to do a spectacular move around the outside, did not have the grip to go around the outside of Shanaka Clay, which would then have been the inside for turn two. But right now, very impressed with Clay out in front. He got a very good start from Kiefer, who looks a little bit out of shape going into the hairpin, but not as much so as Blakely, which is going to allow Brendan Lee all over the rear diffuser as we head towards the last chicane. But right now, Clay very much comfortable out in front. Who is going to get P3 as we head towards the dreaded Wall of Champions? The two-time champion wants to avoid adding his name to those who have been into it. And you can see that he's all over the curves in a way that he wouldn't have wanted to be. The chance of P3 has disappeared. And it's a five-second time penalty. You can see on your screen, Danny Beresne uh, closing in on uh, McLaren ahead. So not the absolute chaos that we've seen on the, uh, in the past around this circuit, but Shanaka Clay uh, doing so well, considering it was pole position in uh, conditions with one lap, but gathering it all together, going very nicely, and, and that's nearly a second lead at the front. Keith are trying to respond loves these conditions and right now everyone's trying to get themselves into a rhythm as we go back to Brendan Lee trying to improve past Lucas Blakely the winner of the pro exhibition race on the streets of Monte Carlo you see how well judged it is but it's so easy to catch a white line in these conditions look at the concentration for the two-time champion at the bottom of your screen all about the exit here that defines your momentum up to the final chicane map loving these little in in game cameras as bono has left the session very impressed as i say with clay at the moment he's oh he's getting caught just slightly by Kiefer on this lap and brendan lee just sitting in the slipstream of blakely gets all out of shape coming out of the final chicane will lee try and go around the outside i'm sure blakely will try and cover the inside line and he does Ooh. Risky stuff if he's going to try and pressurize, but he's going to get it done. That is an accomplished move if he can pull it off. That is super stuff from Brendan Lee, who has the momentum, has P3, and that was the move of a champion. Very nice indeed from Brendan Lee. You can tell he's maybe practiced a little bit more in these conditions because you can just see everyone loves to practice in the dry conditions. The wet ones, not so much. It's a bit more of a chore, a bit more challenging. But this is where it shows. This is where the practice, the dedication, the hard work from these drivers, hours upon hours, every single day, training for things like this. And it's not just training the circuit, it's training every condition. Dries, intermediates, wets, and then the changing of conditions, knowing when to pit. There's so many factors going into play with these sorts of uh, drivers and aliens, as they're known, which is, <laughs> uh, they are amazing to technical watch. Technical term. Yeah, a technical term <laughs> in the esports community, I suppose. And we're just having a look at another one, Lucas Blakely, who was unbelievable round back who I would say robbed. I was very impressed, as uh, the guys on the desk said, about his, his response to the fact that he got a little nudge. It kind of put him out of shape on the final lap at Baku and cost him the win, but he, he took it on the chin and he's back again at the front. I would imagine he would have been slightly more frustrated if he'd not had that fantastic win in Monaco. I think it might have been a different answer from him. Uh, Marcel Kiefer with the fastest lap of the race. And uh, Kiefer in second position, trying to get that gap down. But Shanaka Clay right now, loving life at the front. And Blakely, not with the pace in these conditions that we've seen in the previous two rounds. And Josh Odoo is closing in the McLaren hunting down the racing point. Very intrigued to see how the weather unfolds over these next few laps, because the wet weather tires, they are pretty durable. So I wouldn't be surprised if the conditions don't change, that these guys try and eke these tyres all the way to the end. They don't have to pit. It's not like dry conditions in real life Formula One where you have to use at least two compounds. In the wet weather, it does not matter. So they don't have to pit at all. Obviously, no refueling either uh, in this in these cars and in this state of regulations. Here's Josh Udowu. Very impressed again. P5 running very comfortably at the moment, just behind Lucas Blakely, who is falling away from Brendan Lee. So it seems like it's almost a three-horse race at the moment with Lucas Blakely just lacking a little bit of pace. Another person a bit slow, which is Freddie Rasmussen, down in P9, not really showing the form that we're so used to seeing. The Iceman, no mistakes. I just love watching him uh, in these eSports series when they're, at the, when they're here, and you just see how little he turns the wheel and how calm he is. But right now, the man setting the pace, well, it was Shanaka Clay, but it's Brendan Lee with the fastest lap with a 120.6. And he is closing in on Marcel Keith for P2. 
Yeah, Josh Adu really applying himself nicely here. Uh, the F1 Esports Challenger champion from previous years and very much enjoying a uh, comfortable pace right now ahead of uh, previous race winner Danny Berezne in the Alpha. So interesting to see how things have been uh, shaken up by that single lap qualifying. Also that, uh, that we've got these conditions, but they've had a while now, Matt, to, to adapt to these conditions. And it doesn't seem to be anyone who was lacking confidence at the start has, has gained any. Uh, Jarno Otmir were on board with, the most recent race winner after that fantastic three-car battle uh, around the streets of Baku uh, in the Alfa Romeo. That's the team he'll be with for the remainder of this year. And, well, with those blue-walled wet tyres down at the hairpin, we have a, a static situation apart from the battle for P2. I would say Brendan Lee looking good having closed down that gap got past Blakely and now finds himself closing in on Kiefer. So that is going to be the key battle to keep an eye on. Uh, and Shanaka Clay will just be hoping, you know, you battle for one, two, three, four, maybe in five laps, guys, and just let me streak <laughs> away out front. At the moment, it's going to be defining. If Brendan Lee is going to win this race, he's got to make this move rather quickly on Marcel Kiefer. Brendan Lee looking very strong indeed, closing in on Marcel Kiefer and Clay only 1.2 seconds down the road from Kiefer, so very much on the cards for Brendan Lee, our two-time champ, very much showing the form that we were so accustomed to over the first two years of the Pro Series, and he can see Clay not too far in the distance at all, and he very much is the quickest of these three drivers. Blakely very much not in this fight now, 2.7, 2.8 seconds behind the Mercedes driver. Right now, Brendan Lee, it's, it's, it's a curious case of Brendan Lee where sometimes he'll just turn up and be rapid, and other times we won't even really speak about him. Uh, so he doesn't really have that consistency across every single track anymore, but it's great to see that he does have it, at least in some. Absolutely, and, and we've spoken about this before, Matt, in that the number of hours that it takes to get up to the standard that we're watching right now uh, sometimes I sense a little bit of frustration for Brendan Lee on social media where he's like, well, I hit an amazing standard before, guys. Uh, then the others have responded. Uh, I think he has, will be very, very pleased to have that win to his name earlier in the year back in China, and he will be looking to add to it again. This is Danny Berezny closing in on the McLaren of Josh Aduwu now, and he will be trying to make the move. Will he be forced to go around the outside? No, is he going to go for the late lunge? No, he's not right now. This is Danny Berezny the bottom of your screen, the driver in P6, trying to improve to fifth position, but not finding a way through for the moment. If you watch Danny Berezne break, I'm surprised his foot doesn't go through the wall every <laughs> single time. It is frightening to walk past him when they're here in the uh, arena. It, the, the amount of brake pressure he puts on, he could, do, he could actually drive a Formula 1 car and not have any issues whatsoever. He has been through so many brakes, bless him, uh, but that's his driving style. And clearly, he just needs more and more rigid pedals every single time he drives. But right now, P6, looking pretty strong. A better performance from Berezne. His race pace has been the thing that str he's struggled with over the last few oh, races. Oh, here's Lee. the move from Brendan Lee, sending one to the inside, and that's going to be second position. He knew that if he had any chance of winning the race today, that lunge was going to have to catch Marcel Kiefer by surprise, and that is exactly what happened. Kiefer will try to come back immediately. This is so important. Clay will be hoping this goes for a few corners more, but it appears as if Brendan Lee has done enough to take that position, and next up, he's going for the race win. Game on, Brendan Lee up to P2. I think Shanaka Clay will be quaking in his boots now, seeing a two-time champ behind. Remember, Shanaka Clay has not been in this situation before. He has not won a race in F1 Esports. So very much like Lucas Blakely around Monaco, he will have those nerves settling in, especially towards the end of this race. He's got 10 laps to go, so maybe his nerves are very much uh, <laughs> on the sort of borderline. But as those laps start to count down and the trophy is in sight, that's when the nerves really start to kick in. Back to Danny Berezny, as Flores Villas gets a three-second time penalty for multiple corner-cutting warnings. This is one of these circuits where it looks nice and simple when you look at the track design. Uh, not much in the way of turns, basically a few chicanes thrown in and a hairpin, but it then puts so much pressure on the drivers getting that right lap after lap after lap, and with the standard being so high in this field that any sort of error, you're going to be punished very, very quickly. Danny Perez, they are not able to make his way through. And he's a driver who's had a starring role, a multiple race winner before. He's been in the mix plenty of times. Uh, but 
right now. He won't be pleased to be outside the top five. The very least he would expect is to be running in the top five. Remember, up next, the final F1 Esports Virtual Grand Prix coming your way. Can George Russell win once again? And that will be uh, interesting to see if anyone can stop him around this circuit in a few moments' time. I couldn't quite see who was wide there and scraping down the wall. Rasmussen, three-second time penalty from P9. That's going to relegate him all the way down to around 13th position with how closely contested this midfield is. I think now Corinne added another penalty to his tally, so he is very much out of the running. Another man out of the running, we haven't even mentioned, Tanitza, 34 seconds yeah. off the back of the field. So clearly he's had some big error. Uh, I don't know where we didn't see it, but clearly had to pit probably with a new front wing as well because there's no need, need to pit at the moment. No one's really pitting at the moment. And, well, a, a day to forget for FDA Hublot. Here's Jarno Otmir, last week's winner around Baku, running in P8. But this is the problem. They don't have DRS, so they're very much stuck in this train where they're all very closely contested. And it's just one mistake. That's all they're waiting for. And you can easily snatch a break because, remember, these guys are running no assists, which means no anti-lock brake system, no traction control. Everything is off, which means they very much have to feather the brakes into every single corner and I know how hard it is to, to lock up in these cars I have found out many times when trying to be one of these people <laughs> uh, but yeah it's it's very difficult indeed these conditions are horrible even around such a flowing circuit like Canada it is still so so difficult to keep it on the black stuff to not corner cut with the strict corner cutting rules and we can see that with the penalties flying in so Jano Otmir had a good lap there closing up to the back of her dad who is putting pressure on Berezne. Sometimes when they all get DRS, we get a train that way. Well, in the wet conditions, we don't have it, and we still have this train as the drivers will begin to take more risks as we count down the laps. We've already had 10 laps that have gone by pretty quickly. Shanaka Clay will be thinking, right, that'll do. That is more than enough. Brendan Lee has got the gap down to a second and dropped up. Uh, the gap had gone up in the last few laps. So Shanaka Clay doing a brilliant job after being recalled for the previous race and uh, scoring uh, points in P8, then gets the recall here and has led every lap so far, but the next few are going to be defining for him. No one with that late lunge that we saw from Brendan Lee to take second position, not able to do so at the moment. Brendan Lee will want to get that gap down in the coming laps. I know I've been a little bit harsh on the FDA Hublot team, but shout out to Enzo Benito, who came straight from the Le Mans 24-hour virtual race to here. So I'm sure he is a very tired man. Someone that probably isn't as tired and a lot more fresh, as we can see on our screen, is Brendan Lee setting the fastest lap of the race. Holtzman's now added a three-second time penalty to his tally in 13th place, but you can just see he wants the win. His, his steely determination... I don't think he blinks throughout the entirety <laughs> of this 25% race. Brendan Lee, when he is in the zone, I don't think he'd be able to hear anything. Dinner? No, not going to hear that. <laughs> Anyone at the door? Absolutely not. But it's great to see him right at the front of the field. Seven tenths now behind Shanaka Clay. This is about to get, as I like to call, spicy. <laughs> I knew you'd get it in. I knew you <laughs> would drop it in. Uh, right now, Brendan Lee's thinking about dropping it down the inside at the hairpin and taking the lead. Fastest lap of the race last time around. Another fast one here to get the gap down. You can see in the in the background the uh, Ferrari ahead. And David Tanitza having an absolute shocker today by his lofty, lofty standards. And uh, he's got this lot closing in with both of them contesting the lead. So Brendan Lee's had a great couple of laps. Gap down to half a second. And Shanaka Clay, who has got everything right so far, now needs to show us a bit of defensive driving you would expect in the coming laps. What is Shanaka Clay's racecraft like? We do not know until right now. He is absolutely at the front. Edowu now ah, getting a three-second time penalty. It just shows how easy it is. These guys are so, so unbelievably consistent and quick. But sometimes you can just push that extra half a percent, which puts you over those white lines, and you get a warning, and then three of them, you get a penalty, and then they just start stacking up and up and up. If you get into a rhythm that isn't the right one, as uh, Tanitza, our last year's champion, getting out the way and being lapped. Is he still in the race? I don't know, but has he gone on dries? I'm trying to work out exactly why he's so far. No, he's very much still there, and AI would not do that. So Tanitza just having <laughs> a shocker. And maybe he knew that he was going to be in the in the shot there, so decided to do a lovely, lovely drift run. Great drifting. 
And the gap now down to, at that point, exiting the corner. Three tenths of a second. Schnacker Clay will be desperate. Oh, it's slightly deep from Brendan Lee. That is how hard he is trying late, late, late on the break. Slightly too late there. And that removes an opportunity for him to close down that gap. A minor breather for Shanaka Clay, who is trying to take that Williams to the top step. We've seen some surprises. That's been the great thing about these pro exhibition races. Lucas Blakely treated us to some superb strategy on the streets of Monaco. And is Shanaka Clay going to spring another surprise? Not far to go now. Brendan Lee testing out that late breaking into the hairpin. Donoso has a three second time penalty as we tick down the laps. I've just realized what Tanis is probably doing. He's out of, out of sync, he's completely out off the back. And I think he went on intermediates to try and test exactly when the switchover point is for his teammate Enzo Benito, which ah. is running in P15, so not particularly high, but the right strategy call to potentially move on to intermediates, if it's getting that way, May as well. I mean, Tanitz is not exactly useful down in P19 without trying a, a little tyre strategy. So I think that's what he's doing. So we'll have to keep an eye on his times as Brendan Lee closes and closes to that rear diffuser. Great couple of laps. You have to say, this hasn't come immediately. This hasn't come from a mistake of Shanaka Clay. This has been a cumulative effort from the two-time champion. And he's sending one to the inside, trying to take the lead. He's going to go deep, but he's got track position. Can Clay come back? Clay saw that one coming and retakes P1, but is his battle on at the front now? Clay was super cool. Saw the move coming, opened the door, had the confidence on the switchback. Will he have to go defensive? He doesn't want to go off the racing line, and neither does Brendan Lee, who tucks back in at the chicane. Game on at the front. We've got a race for victory in the final laps once again. That's what we like to see. Finally, some F1 Esports drivers just going for it, sending it. I feel like far too many of these are a little bit too conservative when it comes to fighting for the lead. I think one of the, uh, one of the ones that comes to my mind was Rasmussen at China, who just didn't overtake. I think it was Tanitza. Uh, that's testing my uh, long-term memory. I think but it was Brendan way. Lee. It was Brendan Lee who won in uh, in China, and he uh, and he never sent it yeah, into the head. Sorry, yeah, it was Lee and, and Rasmussen. Thank you, uh, thank you, Alex. Yeah, but this just great to see. He sent it. He doesn't care if Clay's there or not. He goes up the inside. And that's what we love to see, a bit of entertainment, a bit of flair, and it just shows that Brendan Lee absolutely wants P1. He's not settling for anything less. So this is going to be defining. Really important part of the racetrack now, Shanaka Clay. You can see Brendan Lee closing under braking, but it's the exit here. How much of the track? It's a good exit for Clay. And can Brendan Lee get close enough? You can see how much confidence he has under braking at the hairpin, but it's another lap in which he's not going to be able to try and make the pass at his favoured opportunity down there. A fantastic venue. This is such a popular venue with drivers, with fans. There are a lot of them down there at the hairpin, but in terrible, terrible conditions. It's a brilliant performance so far from Shanaka Clay, but remembering what uh, Mr. Deacon said to me earlier about the commentator's curse, enough of that. We're about to go over the line as we tick down these laps. It's lap 15 of 18, Shanaka Clay right now doing all he needs to. OK, we're at a really interesting point of the race now. Lap 15 of 18, we've got people coming into the pits, but there's not many laps to go. So intermediate tyres are being risked by Berezne, Haddad, Vyas. But we've got the likes of Clay and Lee that they won't want to pit. There's only a few laps to go. It is a short pit lane, but at the same time, you want track position this whole time. But you can see it is drying out. Jana Otmir sets the fastest lap of the race on the intermediates. This is not over, Alex. Well, this is a curveball. And we saw Marcel Kiefer in Brazil play these conditions perfectly. Will Clay and Lee and Kiefer as well. Will the top three decide that even though we've just got a few laps to go, you do not want drivers behind with a massive tyre advantage. And the step, if you're on these wet tyres at the wrong time, could be huge. And sometimes it can look a lot drier than it maybe does from this angle. Oh, this is this is a hot spice. I'm mean, I'm really enjoying this. I don't know what they're going to do. This is there's not many laps to go, as I say. Brendan Lee's fallen off the back of Clay now, so does he go for the risky strategy here? Because safe is Clay and Lee and Kiefer all pitting, but someone's surely going to take the risk. Clay carries on and Lee pits. So Shanaka Clay has decided that it's track position or bust. Brendan Lee has decided that he didn't like the feel. He's in to be received by his pit crew. He's putting the Greenwald intermediate tyres on and he's back out there. So he decided that there weren't enough laps to send one to the inside like he'd done before. Intriguingly, Kiefer has not done so. And he was the driver who read the strategy brilliantly in Brazil. 
I think Lee's made a mistake. I'm going to say that and he's going to win the race. But, <laughs> but for me right now, there's only three laps to go. Jan Otmir with a 118.8 though. Where's Lee going to come out? Oh, he managed to go around the outside. Beautiful move. Will that prove uh, a really interesting... Oh, my goodness me. Rasmussen now setting a fastest lap. I don't know how this is going to end, but Shanaka Clay, he's now forced his own hand. Now he has to stay out, as does Kiefer, as does Blakely. So you can see, highest driver to stop there, Brendan Lee. And then you have it, Jano Otmir. Danny Berezny going past Enzo Benito. That's the difference in tyres, you can see. And uh, you see the Ferrari being passed on the full wet by the Inter tyres. They're at the Ferrari Museum at the bottom. Uh, so I imagine Enzo Benito was shouting to David Tanit, so go out there, go out there on the Inters. I want to see when it's time. Well, he didn't decide to do so. Other drivers have rolled the dice. They've decided to risk it. But has Brendan Lee gone the right way? He's got Vigang in front of him, not much. Uh, in the way at all. So Brendan Lee moves up to fifth position. There are 4.8 seconds for the lead. We are on lap 16 of 18. There is Brendan Lee, who decided that he didn't have enough laps to get past on the wet tyre. Came in, changed tyre, and now he needs strategy to win the race. It needs to stop raining for Brendan Lee. I feel like it was just two little laps remaining to go for the intermediates. He's got four seconds to Adowu, and then another nine or so to Clay. 14 seconds in two laps. I don't know if that's possible. It really does have... The sun has to come out now for Brendan Lee to really have a chance of winning this race. You can see why the drivers in the middle of the pack went for it. They had nothing really to lose by going for it. Jano Otmir is the next highest driver who's made that stop. He's about to get past Patrick Holtzman in the next couple of corners. There is a clear advantage. There is Jano Otmir getting uh, passed up to P8. There is a clear advantage on the intermediate tyre right now, but we're on the penultimate lap. And the advantage will only get bigger for Brendan Lee on this final lap as well. We're, we're about to start the final lap with Schnacka Clay. Oh, I don't know. I don't think this is close enough. I think Lee may be able to get second back, but it really depends on how quickly he can get past Adobu. Can he do uh, Joshua Adobu into the final chicane? Oh, he's already got the traction. Just no, look you, at the that's grip the difference. difference. That's the difference. And if he'd had a couple more laps, this could have been on. But the strategy call right now, it looks like P2 is the upper limit for Brendan Lee. What a shame. Uh, I, I love this sort of race where it's a completely different strategy for the for the top two. Brendan Lee steaming through the field on intermediates. He sets the fastest lap of the race. He has to get through on Blake, Break, uh, Blake Lee. But I'm going to call him Blake Lee as well. Yeah, you've done it as well. <laughs> See, I think that might be his actual name by the time we're finished. <laughs> uh, it's Tom Ziller and then it's Blake Lee. <laughs> love it. But Brendan Lee up to P3 now. Now he has to catch the red ball before the end of the race. It's a five second lead for Shanaka Clay who has read the strategy the right way. He's got a lead over the Red Bull. He's got Brendan Lee doing his best impression of a wet weather maestro. Maximum attack over the grass on the exit of the kerb there. Yellow flags, drivers pushing it too far all over the racetrack. But we're on the final lap of the race. And so P2 in the sights of the Mercedes, but he wanted P1. That was the position that he thought that he was trying to go for. And you can see the wet weather tyre, it's not going to have any chance on traction. That is where, and that is why he's able to put the car on the outside. Oh, they've collided! They have collided at the very end to open the door for Lucas Blakely, who goes up to second position. The racing point up to P2. Through goes Josh Duo as well to the podium. And it doesn't work for Brendan Lee. Here, though, is Shanaka Clay, who withstood the pressure, read the strategy right, and weaves across the line to win. There's contact at the end there. Josh Adoo spins round, Brendan Lee sent it. Contact between the McLaren and the Mercedes. Blakely is second across the line, Brendan Lee is third, but it's Shanaka Clay who read it right and has taken victory in Canada with a superb drive. And we had action all the way to the final chicane. What a race. Thank you very much, wet weather. That was an amazing <laughs> last few laps, and Shanaka Clay held his own, and he just decided, no, I'm, I'm keeping track position. You can go into the pits, Brendan Lee. You can go for the master class, weaving through all the field. Didn't end very well for Brendan Lee, who finishes P3 in the end after contact with Adowu at the end. This is Marcel Kiefer, who was on for P2 on that last lap and then found himself relegated. And Brendan Lee, who had that contact at the end, looked like he had the pace on that wet tyre, felt he needed to do something. Uh, and you have to say that the lap, he sent one to the inside. 
He got past at the hairpin. The lap that Shanaka Clay then had after that, that is what forced Brendan Lee to come into the pits and try the alternate strategy. It didn't work out the right way, but man, it was some great entertainment. <laughs> Wowzers, uh, sweaty palms there right at the end. Well, that had everything, but first of all, congratulations to Shinaka Clay. Had pole position in quali and, and then held on to it. But I tell you what, there were twists and turns quite literally and the pit stop from Lee, that collision with Kiefer, where do, we, where do you want to start talking about well, that? I tell you what, when I heard, when I saw that it was a wet race with a mix-up grid, I thought, hello, here we go, there's some entertainment for you. 2011 all over again. The question was, who was going to be king of the wet a la Jensen Button? And, and it proved ultimately to be Clay. Like, he, he was magnificent. Only his second race to come through and sustain that pressure. Um, you know, and there was a lot of pressure. And then the contact at the end, again, it was a bit like Vettel going off and opening the yes, door, Yes, of it? course. Uh, coming onto the grass and then obviously yeah. uh, caught up with Hamilton. Uh, but it, it did definitely had that, and we watched it unfold. It was kind of like Baku, the three-way race at the end. There was a bit of collision between Blakely. Blakely, though, you know, done fantastic, or as he's now known as Brakely. Uh, he uh, got it but to, to uh, finishing in second. I mean, he's been fantastic. He's there or thereabouts yeah. to capitalise on any mistakes. But we're watching this. Visibility is difficult. And yet, Brendan Lee almost had the ideal strategy uh, changing uh, tyres towards the end. And it was it was back and forth. And um, unfortunately, there was a collision with uh, Josh Adewa, his uh, first uh, race uh, in the F1 eSports um, and, and got caught up in something and then uh, spinning back down the, the grid or positions. But um, for you, any particular other driver that stood out? I, I think... Uh... All this shows me, and I know I've said it time and time again, is that you've just got to have a calm, assured performance and be ready, as you say, like Lucas Blakely did so well, is, is to exploit the situation when those opportunities present themselves. Because there is so little to choose between these guys. We know they're all super talented, and we know that anything can happen. And this kind of entertainment is exactly what we need and exactly what they've delivered throughout the whole of lockdown for all of us through this virtual series. Yeah, there was Brendan Lee sending it wide there to try and uh, get around Shnacky Clay, but he just did enough. And, and also, interestingly, he said, no, these tyres are going to last me. I'm going to be in the wet. It was beginning to dry up a little bit, but, but actually, in the end, he made the right decision. And we're seeing Brennan Lee go into the pit. It seemed to work. Um, great uh, overtake there of, of Patrick Holtzman. Uh, and then he had Fabrizio Donoso, Simon Weigang, Josh Adewa to, to get past, and he managed it. And mm -hmm. this is what we're seeing here. This is the moment, the turn. And then it seems like Marcel drifts out a little bit. And then at which point, unfortunately, Brendan's able to capitalise, round, Blakely's gone into uh, second position. And I don't know what happens with Josh in the McLaren there, but they must have got caught up because he slips down, uh, as you can see, uh, right down there, um, into fourth. But, but again, Brendan Lee, it didn't work out for him, but just showing his class and knowing the circuit and knowing what he needs to do. Brendan Lee is a bit of an enigma, isn't he? Because uh, Matt talked about it earlier, a slight lack of consistency, but we've seen these big bursts of talent. And certainly what he showed today was that never give in attitude. He was fighting right until the very end. Yeah, I, I love that. To me, in my mind, I'm like, hang on a minute, Brendan Lee, no consistency. Uh, he's two titles, but it goes to show. No, but I mean, in this, he's, in this mini-series. He's, he's lost it a little bit, but then but gained I, it. Yeah, but the talent is still there. So it would be interesting to talk to him to find out what's worked for him and what hasn't whilst we've been in lockdown. Yeah, well, listen, uh, we had the number of Brendan. We've decided not to call him. Instead, oh. we are chatting to Shanaka Clay. Congratulations. Uh, this is your first win in the F1 Esports here at the Gfinity Arena. You must be ecstatic. Oh, I'm over the moon, man. I'm glad you didn't interview me a few minutes earlier because I couldn't even speak. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, second race ever on this grid and first win. It's just an uh, absolutely incredible feeling. I have to say, you sound incredibly calm. <laughs> You've got yeah, a very calming influence. I think everyone's just relaxed into this. But, I mean, that race had everything, didn't it? It was exciting stuff. What did you feel when you saw it was going to be a wet race throughout? Oh, I was, um, well, probably not appropriate to say what I was thinking on, <laughs> on the stream. Um, I did a little bit of wet practice before, of course, um, and the pace and the feeling in the car was pretty dreadful. Um, but we we played with the setup a little bit, but I was still running a dry setup. But it it seemed to work okay. Uh, clearly, um, able to keep keep control at the front.
Yeah, now I've got to say, uh, Shanaki, you came into uh, the F1 Esports Pro Exhibition race last week in Baku. That was your first race. Uh, P8 there, so, you know, fantastic uh, debut. And now to get your first win, uh, where do you see this going for your career? Because the F1 Esports Pro Draft later on in the year, do you feel like you've done enough for teams to notice your ability and talent? I think even getting onto this grid, I think for me is a huge achievement and, um, you know, getting a, a points finish in my first race, getting wing damage in that race as well, and then winning the next one out uh, once I have a clean race is, uh, I think it set me up well. But um, once we come to the pro draft, I'll just uh, give it everything once again and uh, see if anyone wants to give me a chance. And what do you do between now and then? Just uh, keep grinding, I guess. Um, just hope for some news coming up in the in the near future when everything uh, hopefully starts to clear up. Um, but yeah, just uh, keep on going and um, see what happens. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, you couldn't have done any better than you've done, Shinaka. I, I have to ask, though, because Alex Jakes and Matt Gallagher were saying, I wonder what's going through his head now. Uh, a two-time world champion was right behind you. They had that moment where he was going around the outside and you had the inside line and, and you managed to get back. Were you a little bit nervous with uh, Brendan just in your, your rear view mirrors? Uh, well, I was, uh, yeah, extremely nervous because obviously I had Marcel behind me at the start and, you know, he's a great driver in himself and then Brendan got into second and, you know, he's the fastest car on the track and a, a two-time champion and, um, you know, it's my job to try and keep him at bay and, and he went for the dive in the hairpin uh, with a few laps to go and I managed to get him back and, uh, yeah, I think that pushed him maybe into a bit of desperation going for the... Uh, the inters at the end, but I think it was the right call. Well, it was definitely the right call staying on the wets and, uh, yeah, to hold him off, you know, out of anyone is a great achievement for me. Well, listen, Shanaka, go and be more calm and chill by the sounds <laughs> of things with your voice. Go and enjoy really uh, the win. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic stuff. Well done. Congratulations. Well, there you go. I mean, I'll tell you what, just chatting to Shanaka, I had sweaty palms before. Now I just feel relaxed. I'm like, he did, did everything he needed to do and just seems so focused on he's done enough he's done all he can and now hopefully uh, a team will pick him up for the next series and you know what if they don't he can record some meditation videos and recordings because i would definitely fall asleep that voice is just so calming yeah and uh, <laughs> however uh, two more drivers on the line at the same time lucas uh, brakely as he's known now and marcel <laughs> kiefer gentlemen uh, first of all i'll come to lucas you, you were there or thereabouts in the mix managed to get second what a pro exhibition series it's been for you uh, I in, just in, myself when I don't have to speak. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just come to Marcel in a second. Lucas, can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I was just uh, trying to hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lucas, listen, what a series it's been for you. Uh, second in Baku, uh, winning uh, in Monaco. Uh, what did you make of today's race? That was <laughs> a nightmare, honestly. <laughs> it's never easy. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I know. I can't honestly believe the run of you know, results and stuff. But I mean, yeah, that race was really, I, put, I had, a, I mean, I heard Shanaka's interview and firstly, congrats to him as well. That was a unbelievable performance from him um, to, you know, basically disappear from everybody as such. Um, and then I think he had like 8.9 seconds on me at the end. So fair play to him, congrats. Um, but yeah, I mean, the car was terrible. <laughs> I had a dry, I had a full dry setup on thinking, ah, the rain won't last long. And then it's the whole race. So, <laughs> well, it was interesting to say the least. But um, yeah, we managed the end. And towards the end, it was really dicey as well because the track was getting much drier and we were on the wets and they were completely overheated, super worn out. And wow, it was just trying to hang on to the end, honestly. Uh, well, you did wow. it. You, you managed it, Lucas, which is correct. I have to say, Nutty, you can see the body language of Marcel Kiefer, arms folded. I'm not sure if he can hear us now. Oh, Marcel. You're still <laughs> smiling. You're still smiling. <laughs> Must no, no, be disappointed, I, though. Yeah, t t just tell us about that contact at the end there. Uh, difficult. I think um, looking from my own board, I thought like in the heat of the moment, like what the hell is he doing? Um, but shortly after, when I've seen like the whole clip, I, I think it's maybe... I don't know, a bit more on Brendan than me, but no, I would just say racing into them, no need to put fingers on anyone. The race is anyways a show race and not for the championship. So in the end, it delivered the entertainment. Everyone is now debating about what's right, what's wrong. And I think that's Brendan and me did a good job with that. So, yeah. I mean, he says that, but it all matters, doesn't it? I mean, you're building towards the Pro Series at, uh, later this year. What, what, how important are good performances now in light of that? 
Um, I mean, it's all right. Like, um, I'm, I'm happy with the performances, also considering the amount of practice that um, me and the team put in um, for these races, because in the first few races, we were pushing a bit more than the final ones, just because of how the schedule went with all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. But of course, um, it's a good push for the ego, like uh, succeeding in these races. Also, well done from Lucas again for another podium. Good job, good consistency. and. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Pro Series. Yeah, uh, as am I, uh, Marcel. All the best to you. Congratulations, uh, a fourth place finish today. I just want to ask one final question to you, Lucas. Uh, I mentioned it before, second in Baku, uh, second today, then you won in Monaco. Also, you finished third uh, in Lagos for the Dutch uh, uh, Pro Exhibition. My question is to you, have you got enough in the tank to compete with the likes of David Tanitza and potentially push on and win the championship? Well, I mean, I think that's the goal of every driver here is to push for the championship, but definitely um, that's the objective to try and, you know, push as hard as possible to, you know, keep up this performance because as as in, uh, as impromptu as these races have been, maybe if it's the word, as like, sort of sudden they've all came up, it's been a really positive thing, um, you know, to, you know, get out there and do some races. And it's been really, I could, honestly, it's very hard to ask for much more than... Um, then it's happened, so what, definitely we just need to keep up this work and hopefully, you know, we can continue this into the pro series. Well, listen, Lucas, well Marcel, thank you very much to you, gentlemen. Uh, that is it for the end of the show, Natalie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Alex Jakes, to Matt Gallagher. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you, it uh, should be, uh, later on in the year for the F1 Esports Pro Series. That is the pro exhibition done and dusted. We'll see you in a second for the Virtual Grand Prix. are on. It's all to race for. Coming to turn four. Oh, he's hit him. He's done it. What oh, he's done it too.